my name is Igor Yovamore, and I'm a developer at Open Zeppelin. For those of you who don't know, don't know us, um, at Open Zeppelin we build developer tools and perform audits of decentralized systems, uh, which power multimedia and lowers economies. Uh, we work with the Ethereum Foundation on the Solidity Compiler audit and. And we created the most popular smart contracts library, which has over 1 million downloads and over 180 contributors. As you can see, we spent some time writing and auditing smart contracts. And today, I'm excited and delighted to share my findings on how you can improve your Solidity developer experience with Hot Loader. But before we jump to the next slide, please raise your hand if you ever written a smart contract in Solidity. Yes, developers, developers, developers. <laughs> okay, um, this is a compact disk. Back in the days, developers used it to ship software, and it was literally immutable code. Once you ship it, you can't change a single line on it. It affected the practices back then, Developers were really careful about testing and polishing their code because they knew once it's out, you can't change it. Does it remind you something? Something we do today? This is Internet Explorer 6. It's the first browser I ever used and it's the first browser I've written code for. Back in the day, it was, following, it was working the following way. You would edit your mixture of uh, JavaScript and HTML in external editor, then you save it, and once you save it, you go back to the browser and you refresh the page to see what has changed. And if you have to change something else, you have to do it again. And does it remind you something? And what do you think? How, which developers' tools in the Explorer 6 had? The answer is no, it hasn't, it hasn't any developer's tools. And I'm here not to smash Internet Explorer 6, it uh, was a great piece of technology at the time. Um, you will see a lot of similarities about how developer's tools were back then in the days and how developer's tools are today at Ethereum blockchain and blockchain in general. Uh, we're going to see a quick short video, but before that I'm going to explain what's happening here. Okay, so I have a really simple smart contract, it's called Counter. All it has is a simple, is a one state variable called count, and it can go either up and down. Basically this smart contract just counts up and down, and it has appropriate methods, increase counter, decrease counter, which you can modify with state variable. And on the left, there is a front-end representation of this smart contract written in Create React app. It displays a contract address, as well as the current value, which is 32, and there are two buttons to increase and decrease the counter by one. And let's say we realize that increasing counter by amount is not good enough for business logic and we're only going to increase it by the number of three. In this video I'm going to modify the smart contract to do that and it's going to be reflected on the front end. Let's see. So first I'm going to edit smart contract itself and save it. Then I'm going to compile it with a compile command once it compiles, I'm going to deploy it. But because Ethereum blockchain is mutable, every time you deploy it, you have to initialize your new contract. And my old contract has a value of 32, but now I have to provide a new value for the counter, an initial value. I'm going to go with 1 to 3. And also, because new contract has a new address, my React app can't pick up the um, the files required for Frontium. So I also have to restart my Create React app, which takes some time. 
but oh, you see how it, like I, I ran out of things to say while it all happened. <laughs> and let's say does it even work? Okay, so I'm going to press the button, MetaMask as usual. Yes, it works. It went from one to three to one to six, and so over a minute we achieved incredible things. We just changed the counter, so now it adds three, right? And I believe you would agree with me that there is quite a lot of steps involved for something trivial. I call it one line change problem. Uh, let's break it down quickly. In order to, at the minimal, change one line, a smart, a smart contract, which is tied to some front-end app, you have to change a smart contract, then compile it, then deploy it, then, re thanks, then restore a state. <laughs> then restore a state. And if you, if you had some a complex state, restoring state can be really non-trivial because once like, you deploy all the contracts, all your state is gone. And if it was in the middle of like, debugging some issue, and suddenly you have to reroll everything. Everything is gone, and I experienced it personally. And then you have to refresh the browser. But if you think about it, how it really should be is it, is it do we like, if you look at Internet Explorer 6, it's not like how we do things anymore. Now we have this uh, luxury of development tools as uh, like hot loading on front end, web dev uh, servers, which just like refresh everything for us, watch our files. You just type code in your editor, hit save, and everything works in web development. And I believe it should be the same experience when you develop applications for Ethereum. <coughs> um, excited to present you Solidity Hot Loader. Solidity Hot Loader address this problem We're going to see another video. It has the same setup. There is a, a counter contract, which you're now familiar with, which you're now familiar with. And the same front end on the left. But right now, initial value is 28. And there is a console at the bottom. And we're going to repeat the same steps as just we did before. But at this time, with Solidity Hot Loader enabled. Let's do it. We're going to change the file and save it. As you can see, it starts to compile things in the console while I'm randomly clicking everywhere. And suddenly our front end does refresh. And if I press the increase button, it does increase by three. But as you can see, the state of the counter stayed the same, which is strange because the state, if you deploy your code, should change. You would think, why? How? How is it possible? Let's quickly break down what Solid Hot Loader does for you. It compiles your smart contracts. Essentially writing a compile command for you, so you don't need to type anything. Then, it deploys a new binary code to the local node, such as Ganesh, this is a tricky step. And then it refreshes the browser page for you. Let's dig into how exactly it deploys a new code in the way you preserve your state and address. The answer is upgradability. Behind the scenes, Solidia Code Loader relies on upgradability pattern, which allows you to change implementation of a smart contract without losing its state or address. Um, so if you have loaded your use implementation uh, by Open Zeppelin SDK, it's called Upgrades, and I'm going to give a quick uh, explanation how it works, but if you want more, if you want to know more, go to openzeppelin.com slash SDK and you'll find everything you want to know about it with far more examples and better detailed explanation. So how it works? There is a proxy contract which pretends to be your contract and handles all the calls. 
and it used DLJ call instructions to redirect the function calls to contracts which do contain the implementation logic while the uh, contract, while the proxy contract calls all the state and address. In that way, we always interact with the proxy contract. That is why our state and address is preserved at all times. And then we change the call and hit save in our editor. What happens is the new bytecode gets compiled and uploaded to the blockchain and proxy address implementation is changed to the new new contract implementation and all the calls after you upgrade it go to the new implementation in that way you can achieve frictionless transition from old call to new one where you preserve the state and your address which is placed nice placed really well with front-end tools Yet, uh, upgradability being great and awesome for many cases, not always works for every project, every environment, every setup. And I was thinking, can we do better? Can we create some solution which will be a silver bullet for, um, for seamless development in any environment with any framework or library? Um, we have to talk a bit about Ganesh uh, before, as you all know, Ganesh is a Ethereum RPC client which is really good for development and testing, has slightly used and has quite a few features to help you with testing and development. And in particular, it has this custom methods EVM snapshot, EVM revert, EVM increase time, and mine. They allow you to do things which are not possible on production ready nodes such as parity and gap. For example, EVM snapshot allows you to take a snapshot of your blockchain, do some stuff, and then go back to, and then go back to this state, which is not possible on mainnet, I guess unless it's did out, but then it's expensive. And with other commands, which is increased time, allows you to jump in time forward to really helpful with testing. And even mine allows you to mine a block. As you can see, something similar between these commands is that they allow you to do things which are not possible on mainnet, yet it's extremely valuable and helpful during testing and development. And I was asking myself, is there like any missing commands for our uh, test development Ethereum clients. Uh, I want to suggest the uh, present the EVM update command. Just to be absolutely clear, this is on the state of an idea, proposal, and research at this moment. The idea behind this command is it will allow you to upgrade smart contracts. Uh, in a, in a really hacky way without like mining blocks or altering anything else. Essentially just swapping the implementation of one implementation of a smart contract with another implementation. Uh, so I'm going to give a quick example of how it's going to work. Let's say we have the same smart contract counter which you now like, have expert knowledge on. And the original implementation it just improves the count by one, but we want to allow this to be increased by any arbitrary amount. And on the left, we have a series of calls from top to bottom. And to start, we're going to call it get counter, which will return 32 is the initial state of our contract. And then we're going to call EVM update to update. Uh, the smart contract with a new bytecode which will be bytecode allowing to increase it by any amount and after that we're gonna call increase counter method increasing by three but 
this call is not going to fail because now our, call, now our contract has a new implementation. And after that, we're going to call the get counter method, which returns the, now the value of 35. In that way, not only we upgraded our smart contract, we also preserved the state and address, which is really important for developers tools because you want to have you want to hide all the complexity from the user, a developer, uh, and to hide it inside the dev tools. And this approach has, in my opinion, a huge a huge surface and opportunity for other developers tools as well, where ability just to modify any modify implementation of any smart contract, of course, not going to happen on the blockchain any, anywhere, anytime. But again, it's very valuable for developer tools and will enable all sorts of tricks which will create a huge value for the development process. Um, in the end, I want to talk a bit of the uh, future of free dev tools in the way that I believe that the future is not predefined. There are many, many possible futures. And as you all know, almost a century ago, gas cars were competing with electric cars. But for some reason, for various reasons, electric cars lost the battle to the gas cars. And only right now, electric cars are starting to get some traction. Um, and in this way, blockchain doesn't particularly has to happen. There are like other futures where it happens in 100 years. But I personally don't want it to happen in 100 years because I want to see it happen. And I believe that if our developers tools will stay on the level of Internet Explorer 6, it's going to be hard to bring new developers to the Ethereum ecosystem because the expectations right now of the developers are so high, they've been like super spoiled and unless we make this uh, awesome web free developers tools happen, I would say it's going to be incredibly hard to achieve developer adoption. I urge you all to try Hotloader today. To do it, just run npx uh, cli unpack tutorial command. And by the way, this is the slide where you take a picture. <laughs> but if you're a security uh, concerned person and don't want to run random code on your machine, you can just go to our Open Zeppelin uh, GitHub account and clone Star Trek tutorial. This is a tutorial which has safety hot loader there enabled, so you can play with it. It also has upgradability in CLI, so you get more than just hot loader to play with, and it's rather polished experience. Thank you very much for your time and attention, it was a pleasure.